Hey there. Ken, Paradise Bay Customs. Welcome back to the shop. It's the rear suspension. What could go wrong? Today, we're gonna to finalize the Detroit Speed Quadrolink assembly, and I'm gonna install my new Gear FX 9-inch axle housing. I'll be welding in the upper link pockets and the doubler plates from the DSC Heavy Duty Spring Pocket Kit. I'll show you how the four link bars go in and how I square up the overall Quadrolink assembly to finish things off. As always, I'll walk you through the process and share my thinking. The goal is that you'll be able to pull some insight and perhaps gain some confidence that's gonna help you with your build. Okay, enough talk, let's do. Picking up from where we left off, in the last video, you'll recall, we finalized the floor assembly. Everything has been welded and dressed, and we're good to go. With the exception of the link pockets, I need to finalize them now. Take advantage of the rotisserie and the ease of access so I can weld the floor assembly back in the car and move the build forward. So key to that is to ensure that the quadrilink components are centered, parallel, and square in the vehicle. So how do you do that? But more importantly, how do you do it with certainty, right? And that's why I've been reluctant to weld in the upper link pockets. I haven't been certain that everything is aligned properly, okay? As a fond of saying, validation is key in my brain. So what's gonna give me that validation? Let's stick around, work through the process, and we'll find out. I'm gonna start here on the underside. I'll bring you in for a closer look. Here's the Detroit Speed Heavy Duty Spring Pocket. It's significantly stronger than the stock pocket and offers an additional link mounting location that's an inch lower than the stock location. It connects into the doubler plate that gets welded down on the top side of the floor pan. The assembly is bolt-on for easier installation and the spring pocket can be removed for painting. So I don't have to worry about sealing or painting this area right now. You can see here I've popped in the new U-clips but before you bolt in the pockets, you need to install the DSC swivel links because the 9 16 inch hardware can't pass through. Okay, ready to mount the swivel link, the longer swivel link, into the pocket. Detroit Speed recommends that you mount all swivel link ends facing forward in the vehicle so that when you're driving down the road, you're not driving any dust and debris into the swivel link end. Okay, swivel links facing forward. Having said that, which way does it go in? Logo down or a case on the bench up or vice versa? Or does it make a difference? Well, it does make a difference. The bar, center line of the bar is offset from these mounting faces. This side of the bar is closer to this surface than it is here. So on the right hand side, the passenger side, we're gonna ensure that the bar is pushed as close as we can to the frame so that we're maximizing all the distance to the outside, to the rocker side for wheel and tire. This aluminum spacer again gets mounted to the outside and fills in this pocket, okay? So bar tighter to frame and on the driver's side, we'll mirror that, okay? We'll mount the bar with the logo up or facing down in the vehicle, okay? And it'll be a mirror image so that we ensure the bars are parallel within the mounts. Let's mount the bar in the pocket. And this is where I really ran into my first problem. The tolerance between the link and the bushing to fit it within that pocket, extremely tight. I think the powder coated finish doesn't help any. Um, I put the pocket in my vise and spread it apart a bit already. Um, as you can see here, I still need to open it up a bit more. I don't wanna ream the link and spacer in i fear that that pressure just might bind but I, I mean you do crank down on a bolt so kind of counterintuitive but again i don't want to ream it in there or hammer it down with a big bulping hammer so i'm just going to work that pocket open up the flange a little bit more so that i can slide the link and the spacer in with a little less difficulty let's go over to the vise okay i have the pocket in secured in the vise, a shop rag to protect the powder coating. I have a big adjustable wrench on the opposite side of the flange. I'm just gonna put some of my body weight into this and try and rock and open it up a bit. I'll work it around, 
move the pocket in the vise and uh, slowly but surely spread it apart and I'll see if I can get a little more agreeable tolerance. Okay, that last little bit of reaming was just a ticket. I was able to squeeze in the link and the spacer. Then you just wiggle it around, line up the holes, push the bolt through, just hand tighten the nut, uh, and we're good to assemble the left-hand side, a mirror image, and we'll mount them in the vehicle. Okay, we're here on the passenger side. I just wanna share a tip with you. I mentioned earlier I bought new U-clips. What I did do though is I did open up this reveal a little uh, on both sides. Uh, makes it a heck of a lot easier to get these things in and out. And also this locating bolt, I did use a step, my step bit and I opened up the hole to the, the uh, neck size just to give me a little more latitude uh, to position this pocket. I felt it was a little too tight and again I didn't want anything binding so I just relieved that hole ever so slightly uh, to give me a little more flexibility. This hole I left untouched. You see the clips go in nice, nice and easy. Here's the other one. Go in nice and easy. Okay, now we have the passenger side upper front link pocket and the shorter swivel link. On this side, I'm gonna ensure that the bar is again tight to the frame. This is the frame side. So the logo on the swivel link is down. Again, the swivel link is facing forward in the vehicle. No issue getting this to slide in here, uh, trusting because it's not powder coated, okay? So I'm gonna line up the bolt holes, bar tight to the frame side, mirror that on the driver side, and we'll square things up. With the DSC pocket assemblies all in, both sides, now comes the tricky part. You need to ensure that the links are parallel and centered and everything is square, right? How do you do that? Well, if you're on the ground, you can put jack stands under the bars, start to measure both sides, front to back, square things up. Well, I'm not on the ground and I'm on a rotisserie. Well, I'm gonna do things a little differently. As you can see here, I've started to mock up the entire quadrilink assembly, including the rear axle housing. The housing is supported by this ratchet strap suspended down from the frame jig instead of up from a floor jack. Everything is simply topsy-turvy from what you might do from the ground up. I went to the trouble to mock everything in because I find all the different tolerances of the various components work with and against each other to help align things. For example, the axle housing is holding the swivel links the right distance apart. The panhard rod is centering the axle housing. And with everything held in place, it's a heck of a lot easier to measure to ensure the assembly is square. The diagonal measurement off the swivel link from the front left DSE pocket to the right rear swivel link bushing is 43 and a half inches. And vice versa, 43 and a half inches, bang on. Detroit Speed says that if your diagonal measurements are within an eighth of an inch, you're good to go. So just another quick double check to make sure that this swivel link wasn't being pushed unnecessarily to align to the housing. I removed the hardware to make sure that the bar is freely centered within that axle housing, validating that this pocket is indeed in the right location. Not only are the measurements square and centered, but the bar is under no unnecessary force to get it in alignment. So the pocket is where it needs to be. And I remove the hardware from the other side and validate the same. Over here on the driver side, I remove the hardware. The swivel link remains centered within the housing, validating the location of my pocket. Check. Okay, what's next? I have to drill through the floor into my upper link pocket to get those reference points, both sides. Similar, I mentioned I'm gonna drill through these spring pockets as well for reference points. Then I can disassemble the four link, get it out of here, including the axle housing. And I can continue the installation of the doubler plate for these spring perches. Driver side, 
upper front link pocket ready to go. Two coats of wet steel it on the welding surface, likewise the underside of the pocket itself. I'm going to locate it with the reference points and the seatbelt bolt and then we'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, before I start welding, just to recap, three important points. Location, it has to be plumb, parallel, and properly located. We've done that, we've confirmed that with our, our mock-up. So, location, check. The next is fit. Okay, each floor pan is different. You do have to work the pocket. I'm very pleased with the way uh, this pocket is resting on the floor pan. Nice tolerances, welding is ready to go. I've cleaned up the perimeter around the outside flange as I intend to stitch it every inch or so as well. Now regarding the plug welds, the third point, strength. You want to ensure that this pocket is welded to the structural components of the car. And to ensure that, I've taken my drill and I've drilled out these plug welds that are over structural steel. Here was the gusset that I put in between the, the frame rails. That's the frame rail along this inside edge and the frame rail along the outside edge. When I welded the floor pan down to the frame rail, I coordinated my weld points. I know that my weld for the floor pan was here, 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 in between these points that I am now going to weld the pocket to. I don't want to just simply trust the penetration of my weld that it's going to go down into the frame rail. So what, I'm, what I've done, I've drilled out these holes through the floor pan and into the frame rail. So I know that I'm welding um, pocket to frame rail. Okay, I want to have that certainty. It's an extra step, but little due diligence, but it's easy to do at this point. I goofed here, a couple extra plug weld holes. I'm going to take the pocket off one last time, uh, weld those, fill those holes and dress it so that the pocket's not in my way, make it easier. Then I'll put the pocket on one last time and weld it in. Okay, I flipped the floor assembly on its side on the rotisserie, bring you in for a closer look. Everything's been cleaned up, ready to go. You see here uh, the welding surfaces. You'll be welding the frame rail directly to the pocket all along that frame rail edge. And similarly on the floor pan side, stitch weld along the perimeter. Everything gets tied in. So it'll be a continuous stitch weld along the underside sealing everything up and then obviously plug, plug welding through the floor pan up to the underside of the pocket and on the frame rail side it gets welded down from the top all right okay clean up my goof put the pocket back on and weld it in and then i'll bring you back upper front link pocket plug welded stitch welded dressed everything looking really good take you underneath Likewise, everything's been cleaned up, all the surfaces welded, and we're good to go. So what's next? Finalize the lower spring pocket and locate and weld in the heavy duty doubler plate. With the pocket properly located, next step is to transfer punch a couple of the holes of the perch to the floor pan and drill those out. With a couple holes drilled, bolts mounted the initial fit of this heavy duty doubler plate. You do have to trim it. So I've marked where it overlaps the spring or the upper pocket. I'll notch it there. I've cut a slot there. Um, I still have to drill out these three holes. I'll, I'll uh, center punch and mark them from above. And similarly here, these two as well. This one is uh, an existing hole through the torque box and floor pan, uh, factory hole that gets picked up, so it's bang on. And this hole here, which is centered directly over the frame rail, there's a crush tube that you install from underneath and a heavy duty piece of hardware, a big bolt that goes through that you crank down from below uh, on the frame rail. So it locks it into the frame rail. Those four bolts from up and these four bolts going down into the spring pocket below. So underneath, my points are still referenced. Here's the location of that crush tube. You have to open up the frame rail a bit to fit the diameter of the crush tube in, and then the pocket holds it in place. There's a, it's, it's a little loose on the inside, 
So I don't know if I have to put a washer or something to pick up the slop. Don't want this thing rattling in there. Uh, or when I start to crank down on the bolt, um, perhaps it'll all snug up. But we'll monitor that and uh, we'll come back. I'll trim the doubler plate, drill the holes, and let's see if we can get this thing fitting a little bit better. Okay, pretty straightforward, no hiccups. I trimmed the doubler plate, things are fitting nicely. I worked the, the plate a little bit in the vise, get the angles right, and with the help of a few strategically placed clamps, uh, it's fitting nice and snug. Okay, I'm ready to start welding. Again, I'll clamp down, get it nice and tight. I'll finish off the hardware, I'll drill out those remaining holes, cinch it down nice and tight, clamp, plug weld, stitch weld all, all around and this side will be complete. Rinse and repeat on the passenger side and we're good to go. The only thing remaining is the closeout of the cross members and the floor assembly is ready to be rolled back under the 67. Tune in next time. We'll see you then. Cheers.